aka Louis the French Net, and you're watching Schmo Down Night in Canada. On today's episode, again, like usual, we got my boys, Soda and Dave. How are you today? I'm just trying to stay awake, Lou. <laughs> hey, long live Sunday mornings. Yeah. Uh, at least there's only one person out of three are, uh, that are very tired, so we're switching it up. All right. Um, that being said, Dave, I know you're muted. Just say a little hi to the people. Hello, everybody. I'm back. I survived the storm from the last episode, ready to talk about some inner geekdom. Yes, sir. And there's a lot to talk about. Uh, this week, we had five matches. Uh, we separated one episode for Star Wars, and this episode is going to be covering the IG tournament. Uh, let's go dive right into it. Alba versus Warfather. First off, Soda, uh, who do you had in your uh, in your pick to win? I had Warfather. Okay. Yeah, I seem like everybody had Warfather. Uh, uh, yeah, it just seemed to be like the more obvious pick, I guess, but... Warfather was who I expected to win, but I wanted Alba to win. And yeah. I'm really happy the way it turned out because Alba proved like he I don't think he's gonna go is gonna go further than next round, mm -hmm. but he definitely is a much more multifaceted um multifaceted uh, player than we thought he was. Yeah, he, he is and I guarantee you nobody saw the how the match ended uh, coming. Nobody saw a TKO. Or no, a KO. A KO, yeah. Yeah. It's, like, and it, it shows that Warfather maybe uh, like had not too much hype, but you know, he's uh, he's someone that a, a lot of people like, but it, he's very one-dimensional more than you yeah, look at him. I, I, I don't think IG is the leak for him. All right. Uh, yeah, no, neither... It's funny yeah, because he started as an IG player. Yeah, and he didn't win that match either. I don't think. Yeah, he's um, he's like the I'm gonna say this the Achilles or that like they're good, mm -hmm. they're they're good mid to have a couple points here and there, but you don't put all your 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 money like when there's gonna be a redraft and if ever he's not retaken, he's not gonna go and he's probably gonna go in like the fifth, sixth, seventh round. Yeah, and he's definitely more uh, more of a character than a player. And that definitely came to fruition this week with uh, the infamous Alphonse episode that actually broke Harloff. God, that was funny. Yeah, it's, I don't get the reference. Like, is is that Alphonse reference to someone who actually exists in movies? Well, before? Alphonse is is the actual name of uh, Al Capone. Oh, okay, true. Said that's his actual name. I don't know why that's the name he used for his guest, but that it is an actual name. Like, well, again. What is behind Mark, um, uh, Mark with uh, baby carrots, uh, in his names is always like random names that even I don't get sometimes. Well, a lot of his names, though, yeah, because it's funny. No, a lot yeah. of his names are just reference to things in the geek sphere, like different uh, characters from different geek movies. That's all that is. Mm, okay, yeah. Well, and anyway, the first one I got it, but the rest just flew yeah. over my head pretty often. Yeah, the um, one, the one I don't, I think it was this match where he had uh, Captain Stearns or whatever, or the one from that one. It took me a while to to figure out. Yeah, what is Captain Stearns? Uh it's it's a police chief from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, the movie, which uh, Har Harloff said during the or Ellis said during the match. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Anyways, uh, okay, so uh, going for Alba versus War Fodder, uh, it didn't go as suspected. It broke a lot of brackets. Um, do you think Alba is ready to put in more study and can surprise us really like more, or do you think that uh, Alba has uh, reached his, uh, his limit? Um, you know what? There's always room for improvement. Uh, I would say if he wasn't facing Kalinowski in the first round, he could definitely <laughs> do more damage. And you might have a Guy Merle situation that, you know, something happens and Kalinowski just gets the wrong categories and then, boom, next thing you know, Alba advances. And uh, Dave makes a good point. The real rejects are the only one, like, actually ha getting points for the, yeah. the, the quirky mercs, right? So it's the, the, they're really valued right now, even though, you know, they're – be competitors they're racking up the points and making sure they're surviving and they're still slightly in contention yeah just going back to your comparison with the merle guy 
thing. Normally, that would like that would on paper be an apt comparison. However, there was more going into that that ended up with the guy with guy winning. Like it was Dan's mat- first match in how long he wasn't used to the whole character theatrics. He'd never seen mm-hmm. guy perform before. So I, I I don't I think that was more of a once in a lifetime incident like that. Uh, I don't think Kalinowski will get thrown off like Merle did in that match. Well, I I say uh, actually contrary to what you're saying because there's a lot riding on this match. Corruption is, if I'm not mistaken, still dead last. They're not racking yeah. up points. Shannon's not doing that good right now. So that puts a lot of pressure of Kalinowski being the top dog and bringing uh, the points because they need it. They definitely need the points, and they definitely need uh, something to live for because if, if Kalinowski loses, well, that's pretty much done for Corruption. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, but I got a feeling Kalinowski could handle the pressure just because if you think back to the start of the whole corruption storyline, just how much pressure was weighing on him to win for it to actually be effective. So, I mean, for it to play out the way it did, I, so I think the pressure is, is nothing for him. Yeah, well, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll definitely yeah. see. Agree to disagree. <laughs> I, I agree to disagree because I, I think um, Kalinowski is an emotional being and can oh, get yeah. rattled. Uh, and, uh, again, I don't know, like, the relationship him and, and Shannon as, like, in the schmodown. But I know Shannon's writing a lot with with uh, KO and with Chance, right? They have to perform. They... They don't have the 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 luxury of like the burning jugs or having like two teams that could perform and you know having your B uh, B leaguers to actually racking up points. There, it's not happening for them. Yeah, and let's not forget this is Kalinowski's first match of the year. True. Yeah, and this is again circumstances, but it took a yeah. while, you know. Uh, yeah. And Dave uh, did a good point. Dungeons is last, and Corruption is sixth. But again, the like six and down are so low that. Things can switch pretty fast, right? If, if um, like, let's say Parker going on his run, uh, Dungeon won't be last for very long. No. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did play the family. My, my bad. They did that slip uh, my mind too? Yeah. Yeah, me too. It's well, it's you know what? It just seems like forever ago that those studio matches happened. Yeah, and that McQueenie retired. Like it just seems like another lifetime. <laughs> yeah, and it, it yeah, and it, that's the thing. That's worse. I don't know what's worse, the fact that I forgot um, McQueenie retired, or the fact that I, I don't care. Like I don't miss yeah. him. I don't miss him. Yeah, me neither. You know what? Me neither. It's just something that never. Yeah, it doesn't hasn't crossed my mind since it happened. And you would think he made a big impact, but now I realize without Sam Levine, like he's good. He was never wow in singles. He was good, but you you need that perfect partner, and Guy wasn't it, sadly. So he's kind of forgettable when well, you take him out. I don't think it's necessarily that. I think it's truthfully right after the pandemic hit and mm. everything changed in the schmodown. So, mm. I mean, if that hadn't happened, it would still be a big thing. But now that everything's had to be changed, it had to do it with the whole format, they're doing all these new tournaments, or whatever. It's just something that unfortunately fell to the wayside. Yeah. Well, talking about the falling to the wayside, uh, <laughs> Barbarian versus Havlak. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, la, 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 yeah. Or, ha- uh, yeah, has, uh, or as Dave writes it, apparently, Klavik. Klavik. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, to be fair, the K and the L are beside each other, and it is early in the morning. Well, not early for you guys. Uh, it's, it's, that's for me. It's still early. Um, <sighs> now, for uh, for Barbar- uh, for for that match itself, um, Barbarian versus Havlak. Who do you got? Like I had, I had Barbarian. I had Barbarian. Same here. Yeah. Um, Havlak is now a veteran. He's a token. Like, you want him on your team, right? He's a good personality. He knows his stuff. But he's the last... He's the dying breed of what you know versus uh, what you study players. Yeah. And they're getting pushed out. The what you knows are really getting pushed out because the new system is yeah. made for people who study. Yeah, and he's he pretty much admitted as much in the pro scam interview. Like, he doesn't really have time to study. And... Based on this match, he really needs to study his middle earth stuff because that consistently is his weak spot. Yeah, and I, I don't think you're we're gonna see him soon. I might even I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if he's gonna take his retirement and just you know help out for for. Uh, I don't you know? think he's gonna retire anytime soon. He probably will help out. Don't get me wrong when he can, but I don't think he's gonna retire anytime soon. 
I think he's well, having too much fun. Yeah, but it, when you retire, does not mean you you won't be and that's right, involved. He's still, and Dave just said it. He's still on Rogue Two. So yeah. he, he, he might be done for now in the inner, in the inner geek sphere, but he definitely still has his team. But again, teams are being pushed so far mm. back that, you know, that might put still put a wench, you know. Uh, for Barbarian, yeah, he knows his stuff. He, yeah, and it's his first question he's ever missed was in this match. So the, he, he is, you know, human. He is, he has his flaws, but for someone for his first IG match to have that much confidence and, you know, not, I don't, I didn't see a lot of hesitation except for that, that, that question missed. He was confident. He was zoned in and he did his job. Yeah. And you know what? I got a feeling he is going to go far and I uh, maybe a little bit weird to say, but it feels like he's writing the emotion of losing his wife and he's gonna he's dedicated his this tournament to her so i think that's gonna help prepare propel him pretty far yeah and it's like again like um and you know what kudos to him to jump right back into the league after after that with you know her passing and like just the circumstances of it and all that stuff and what's like Paul, to him it's like paul preston he's like it seems like yeah they're, they're surviving because of it you know they, they're having support they're having support or having you know uh mm -hmm. this community behind them and it gives something you know probably distracts them from the reality of life of now you're you're alone you know yeah. so it it really seems to, to to be something that you know helps you grieve instead of like you know i yeah. have to do this you know you know yeah and it, this is the this is the perfect place to do it harloff has built like the best community possible um so yeah no like i said kudos to him and like kudos to preston for for like right after losing their loved ones just jumping right back into the game um did you, you know what it would have probably it would have paralyzed me to be honest and yeah it, it again it's we all grieve our, our certain ways right but at the same time uh, you can see barbarian is living it because i find he was the most in tune to his character yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure how he is in real life. I've never seen like any like real life talk with him. Mm. So, but there's something so 0.5 speed back about him. He's like always a bit slower, <laughs> and he has this pace that you know is a bit more mellow. But he has some really good comebacks, and he's really leaning into the Elvis thing more and more, which yeah. I find awesome. I I want to know where he got Elvis, but uh, you know what? He seems like he's the most authentic. Yeah, he, he's oddly enough, even though he's in um, in uh, Finstock Exchange and he's confident, he seems the most to be one of the most humble at the same time. You know, he's mm. not gonna brag to brag. Uh, you go after him, he's gonna he's gonna say things, but he's very down to earth, which kind of doesn't fit, but does at the same time. Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah, he's definitely a team man. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, anything else you want to talk about uh, that match? Uh, nope, not not particularly. Other than an impressive showing, honestly, an impressive showing from both. Um, but Halavik, you definitely need to watch your Lord of the Rings more. <laughs> yeah, and a good. Uh, that's that's actually one thing I want to talk about. Good on them to having a strategy, like really going into the tapes and seeing mm -hmm. what their what their um Avlik's, uh weaknesses yeah. because that opened up a door to really hammer on Havlik and assure a win compared to making a decision but like uh, maybe i think i remember no, no they knew yeah and no 100 and that's the thing i like the most about i said it a lot in the last episode that's the thing i like the most about the situation we're in is now they're adding that element you can actually see the managers converse with the players and I just love to see what's going through their head when they're talking strategy and stuff. Uh, yeah, and talking about strategy again, like Dave just wrote, is Tom making a claim for the manager of the year now? The that we see what he does. You know what? Yeah. Tom's always, always going to have a claim for manager of the year. That's never going to happen. Not happen. He's a, to put it in hockey parlance. He's the Scotty Bowman of the Schmodown. But it, he. But now he's justified, right? Right. There's a lot of people who's like, oh, just because mm -hmm. he wins, and now we, we see the pudding. You know, we see what he actually does. And yes, he's he's good on the mic. He's quirky. Uh, he's really like strange and interesting. 
But now you see his strategy side. Now you see his manager side. You really see the sports side of Dagnino. 100%. And for me, that even solid side, like, I understand even more now why he's manager of the year and probably is going to be for a long time. Yeah, 100%. And that's why I said this whole new thing, uh, added element of showing the managers do their stuff has been beneficial to the league. Mm. I can't wait to see when it's not uh, because you you might see weaknesses as well, you know, if they're they're doing calls and they'll, they'll you know, counsel the players saying, oh, this, this and that and it backfires on them. Uh, so I can't wait to see which ones actually like you can see the human side or the inexperience yeah. of certain managers. It makes me wonder when everything kind of goes back to normal, uh, if that's going to be an element that they're going to keep for the studio. Mic it up? Yeah. Mic it up? Uh, they should. Yeah. It definitely added something. And, uh, yeah, it makes me curious to see if it's something that they're going to keep. Well, it's um, – it. <clears throat> the more that uh, that – fans will comment on the Facebook page or something they like. Uh, Harloff seems to, to be able to listen to fans and what they yeah. want, right? So if there's enough wave of demands to have it continue, um, is definitely something that I think he would consider. Mm -hmm. Because it just if anything enhances the game, why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. And that, that is his best qualities. He does listen to the fans. All right, now talking about enhancing it and fans, uh, he lost some, he gained some, but boy, Hannah versus Saul. Um, yeah, the main event. <laughs> the main event. Now, it's funny, I would have never thought like Saul, a guy I've never heard of, would actually, you know, be in a main event. And Hannah, for that matter, he's good, but he's never been my favorite because, you know, something never jived, uh, jived with me. But man, he came to play Hannah and stole too. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think the reason why it felt like, uh, as I called it, a main event is because it had that storyline going in of Hannah being traded, of him, you know, uh, burning everything down in in the uh, the promo, and Saul being the chosen boy. Like it was the perfect storm, and the match delivered for all the hype that was it had going into it. Um, mm. Saul, you could tell he was upset after the match, but he had nothing to be ashamed of. For his first match, that was really, really good. I want to see him compete more, and I know he will compete more. Oh yeah, for sure. He he shut up the the naysayers or people who I think who were doubters of him because you know there was a couple moments he did hesitate a bit, but for the most part, what he knew, he knew mm -hmm. very well. Uh, he was able to. You know, to hang with uh, hashtag eighty percent. You know, if you're you're, you're able to hang to hang with someone who has eighty percent over percentage wise in you know accuracy, you're doing pretty good, and you're probably better than a lot of. You put him against Warfather, Warfather gets destroyed. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, and and friend of the show Jay Wade has been tooting uh, Saul's horn this whole time, mm. saying that you know he's hungry and he's going to surprise a lot of people. And you know what? He was right. Yep, like he, was... he surprised a lot of people. And it, it's fun because it, it's a comment I made in the past that Soul has his character personally 100% in. It just depends on how he plays. Now, we saw him play, and we saw even more of his character. Uh, I can't wait to see the evolution because I think there's more he can tap into. He was, he was you know, very serious and very um, concentrated, but I think you can even pull even more of a, a good heel, like not a oh yeah, uh, a, a, almost like a tweener, like a heel that is you know sharp when he needs to be, but still stays respectful. You you know uh, his his promo game too is also off the hook, but I, it's a comparison that a lot of people are like have been using as like an insult towards him, like this Conor McGregor looking motherfucker. Mm. I would like to see them actually lean into that and make him the conor mcgregor personality wise of the showdown see I, I don't know his personality what like how can you describe how uh, conor mcgregor uh... is brash he's arrogant he's confident he backs up all his skills he's a little on the volatile side um one moment people hate him one moment people like him um he's considered one of the best in the ufc um like he's definitely a name that you never forget well, it, isn't that hannah though no, I, I think Saul could pull it off better. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, does Hannah continue in this, this character he's built himself? The, oh, 100%. The, yeah, he really he builds on that. Um, 
you, you we'll, kind of have to. You can't you can't start it and then just dump it after one match. You you have to keep going with it. Yeah, and Dave said like he has to until he loses, and even and even then when he loses, if he loses, you you I personally think you actually go on the route of him losing touch of sanity a bit, you know. Even yeah. go, uh, I know they did that a couple times in wrestling. I, I think it was in uh, Next. There's one character that. Um, he went so off the, the deep end that he was starting to make like weird videos and stuff like that, like showing he actually lost his mind. Uh, I think it was like a year ago. Uh, Alexander Black, I think. Oh, Alistair Black. That's just the way he was to begin with. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you yeah. go, you go into almost an Alistair Black uh, route uh, at the end. Like if he loses, he goes even more insane. Okay. Yeah, you could. Um. All right. So that being said, Hannah. Uh, he delivered. He definitely was hungry. Is he hungry enough to pass next round? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right. Who is, he's? Who is he playing the next well, round? We'll we'll we'll, we'll look at um at we'll the bracket at later. Okay. Uh, considering the fact that you take off the 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 competitor, uh, certain people, the more they advance, the more they they kind of screw themselves over. Do you mm-hmm. think that's gonna happen? Just with the pressure and the added, I have to continue this. Do you think he's gonna? implode on himself no matter who uh the possibility is always there but i think he's finally got a lock locked down on what mm. and everything um really the only thing that I, I think could probably throw a kick in it is having a new manager which are yeah. uh, i would love to talk about if um if you want uh, yeah. going to that that's a whole dynamic that's going to change right because the jewels are still on a roll they're they're doing a lot better than people expected so um would you if let's say you're Harloff, would you establish replacing um, replacing uh, Burnett for someone who has the personality or who has the same mindset and philosophy that Burnett did when it came to it? its? Uh... I would go for somebody who can easily adapt uh, to the situation. Now, the most obvious choice to replace Burnett would probably be Jay Washington. Okay, but I think the best choice would be Ken Knapsack. The reason I say that is because he actually has the experience of being a professional wrestling manager. Mm. So he has he knows how to adapt to the circumstances. Mm. And uh, I, th- I think he would be the best choice, given if he loses his next Star Wars match. Yeah, and I, I, I agree because if you can go interfaction and let's say he gets eliminated in a Star Wars match, there won't be much Star Wars after that. So there's going to be a while before you see him. Mm-hmm. You get promoted, and he – that's the thing. He he kind of did that with corruption, <clears throat> and he didn't seem to, to – to, or maybe it's just me. He didn't seem to be really that involved because he didn't get picked as, uh, as a manager afterwards, right? He went back to being a player. So maybe there's things behind the curtains we don't know. Maybe he doesn't want to be that involved. Yeah, from all – from the little – bit i've heard he doesn't want to play anymore which i understand i don't blame him the game has <coughs> essentially <clears throat> passed him by <clears throat> um he's definitely the person who is better suited for the manager and the uh commentator desk yeah especially for me is especially i, I want to see him back as commentator to be honest yeah. as much as i love baby carrots uh something about or even harloff i want to see more knapsack i miss knapsack yeah so quick wit yeah, no, that's that's one thing that helped differentiate between the different divisions back when it was in the studio and stuff like that was you, it seemed like you had, diff, it's almost like they used they do with, with again, with wrestling, you have different commentary teams for the different shows, or in mm. this case, different commentary teams for the different leagues. Mm. And so that is something that is lacking, because, I mean, if you're having the same commentators for the, for, for everything, it kind of does wane a little bit. No disrespect yeah. to Harloff and Ella, uh, Ellis, they are really good at what they do. But it definitely adds a certain element to have a rotating, um, rotating panel. My choice is like having a rotating panel would mean Napsock to, to to not be a manager and just to yeah. talk. So I I love the Napsock choice, but more I think about it, the less I want it. Uh, here's my choices. If you know we talked about before, I wouldn't mind to see Halflack step down and take over. Okay. Going more a manager, um, being less. Uh, what sadly, this is how I see it. If you can do teach, right? Yeah. So he he's a good player. He has not knowledge, but I would love to see him more 
get around and help people than actually perform. And I like it. I like him on screen. He's something interesting to look at. He's very more lower key than Burnett, obviously, but he would definitely, I find, fit the group <clears throat> anyways. That being said, my second choice would be, um, I don't know if it's possible, but I would love to see Janish. Oh, really? Well, it is possible because he is in the LA area now. No, but I mean because he has he's doing rundown, right? So I don't know if there's be a lot of crisscross, but Janish, uh, or even Brad Gilmer, if you do online, right? But yeah. Janish would be w one of my higher picks too. You you know any anything is possible. Like I mean, you could easily split split the two. Like mm. again, go. It sounds like a beat, I'm beating a dead drum every time I do this. But I mean, to go to the wrestling parallel, like Bobby the Brain Heenan back in the back in the old days. He was a manager, but he was also a commentator, and he would also host shows mm. too. So, I mean, it is possible to, 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 you know, separate church and state, as it were. And uh, Dave asked, with Jen not doing post game interviews, would could she manage? Oh, hundred percent. Jen would be a great manager. Just I don't would, know if she'd want to do it. It would be a very different Bernie <laughs> Drugs, that's for sure. It would uh, be. Well, that's the thing. It's not going to be the Bernie Drugs anymore. Like the Bernie Drugs was Burnett. Now mm. it's going to have a whole whole different feel. I hold it. I can't wait to see what the the logo and and the the thought behind uh, because you got a a very okay. Um, who's in the uh, in the Drews again? You got D thirteen. Yeah, D thirteen. You have uh, Knapsack. You have uh, Hannah. You have uh, Warfather. JT, true. Yeah, JT. Now, yeah. So you still have a very heelish. So you need someone yeah. who can work as a heel. Uh, you need someone which, again, that's why I said Napsock is the best choice. But will he want it? Because he he was kind of in the reins of uh, of corruption, and that just slipped through. But and you know what? I would. This is what I would do. I would name Napsock the manager just for the interim. Like do the whole, you know, interim. Set him on interim. See if he how he does at the end of the season. If he wants to keep going. Make it his team. That way he can draft from wherever he wants next season. Or go a totally different direction and have a different manager next year for the team. I would I would just put Knapsack in for the rest of the year and see how that goes. Oh, that's interesting. Grace yeah. leaves the den, betrays Kate, and rejoins Ken. That is interesting. I did not think yeah. if you're going a storyline, that would actually make a good real life to, to kayfabe yeah. storyline. And it would transition so well. Because Kate and Grace are very different. You can see that, you know, their their approaches and of the characters are polar opposites. So it wouldn't be that much of a stretch to break them up. Yeah, and, you know, uh, I think Kate's reached a point where she doesn't necessarily need a co-manager. I think she could do it on her own now, handle it herself. I wonder who makes more decisions, right? Yeah, because that's, that's, it, that's fair enough. And I, I would maybe, Grace may be just like a, a figure, uh, like just someone who... who is there yeah. and pumps up and Kate is the one who makes decisions or it might be a 50 50 thing. Um, so far, whatever their, whatever their, um, their, their strategy is, it's working for them. So yeah. I just hope by splitting them up, if ever they do, it won't, um, it won't disrupt, uh, the dens, you know, uh, momentum. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't think it would, and it would be kind of interesting to, to, to see have the uh, another power couple back again because really, it, like you could play off the whole Shannon kick them both out of corruption mm. thing, and now you can have the power struggle between Carrot Ko and Shannon and Grace and and Ken that we should have had at the beginning of the year. No, for sure. Um, all right, so I think we pretty much uh, covered for uh, for the manager side. Uh, this is the time. I something I cannot wait to see is next week's matches. Dave, could you uh, pop it up? Let's look at the brackets, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, <clears throat> so Hannah won. Um, all right, so Alba won. Yet this I've seen is Emily uh, Rose Jacobson zipper. You got Ellison Oyama. All right, so uh, for next week, Dave, could you just uh, remind us which ones are actually playing? Uh, yeah, the two IG matches for next week are Janine and John Humphrey. Oh, the yeah, winner yeah. will play Barbarian. And uh, Alex Damon versus Jen Kemp. The winner will play Brandon Hanna. 
Okay. All right. So um, for me, it's an easy one when it comes to Damon Kemp. It's yeah. Damon. Like, unless you never know, Kemp might be, you know, a left, right WTF. We just had the upset of the year. But Damon is is a, is a shoe in Kemp is probably pretty good. But I think Damon is he's one of those people that when he gets obsessed about something, he really wants to perfect it. So I think his first showing was he, him, you know, doing his first studies and everything and his first taste of Intergeekdom. But I have a feeling that he got a lot better with the, the downtime we had. And he's been probably obsessing over getting not just being recognized for, S, uh, for Star Wars uh, division, but to be a household name in IG as well. Yeah, like Damon is odd, the obvious choice. Uh, Kemp, you know, sent. I would not be upset if she lost because I'm starting to feel like I, w- I want to see Damon lose. I want to see the Russian cut, as it were. And again, I'm mm. going to use a wrestling comparison. At this point, Alex Damon's win streak is the showdown equivalent of the Undertaker's WrestleMania streak, where every match you're going in, is this the one we're going to lose? Who's going to beat him? Should it mm. be somebody who's, you know, an unknown who needs it? And if Kemp were a- be a- a- able to end the streak, she's made. Oh, yeah, for sure. She, 100% she's... she's made. So I would I would personally like to see her uh, win. But on the flip side, could you imagine a Damon Hanna match? Like, that would be a barn burner. Oh, that would be a definitely a barn burner. I actually want to talk about that in two minutes. Before yeah. we do, Janine Humphrey. I'm going to go Humphrey. I'm going to go Janine. Okay. And not to not to say like John couldn't win like he he proved it in the first free for all he's sneaky, but I mean I, I want to see I want to see Janine you know win. Yeah, I, I would love to see her win, but I think that the real rejects are are like I said bef- like we said before are the Mercs main point givers yeah. you know and they're very underestimated because they're goofy they don't have the best record. But with the right circumstances, we, as we've seen with uh, with uh, with the last match, um, they're there to to actually make something you know happen. And I think they got a lot of support of uh, Koi Jandrew that they have enough r- resources to make a dent. I don't think yeah. they're going to go to finals. I think if Humphrey goes, um, he's going to lose to Barbarian very hardly too. But at the same time, I don't think Janine would make more of a dent. So whoever wins is still yeah. going to get destroyed by Barbarian. For, for sure. It's just I want to I want to see Janine pass the first round. Like, I actually want to see her, you know, win. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it, it, it feels like it's been a while. It's been a while. In a single match. And if she loses this time, I think we'll see her more as a manager or as a co-manager yeah. next year. Uh, it's... She needs to win if she wants to keep her career as a competitor uh, and not become a you know commentator or or someone who's more involved in the you know in the behind the curtains. She has to do it. Yeah, and uh, this is one of those matches where yeah, I've got my reasons for wanting Janine to win, but if if uh, Humphrey were to win, it wouldn't you know I wouldn't be upset. Yeah, and that's true too. Dave just wrote if the machine wins, it's Sam versus Tom in terms of like managers. Uh, it's yeah. going to be very different type of managing, and it's going to be very interesting to see. And the promo game is going to be off the hook. Oh yeah, for sure. But I, I think I still think that um, you know Koi Janju can hold his own against mm. uh, Tom Dagnino, but it wouldn't oh, be course. as entertaining. That's that's one thing I, I love about the choices for managers is they all can cut a great promo. Mm-hmm. And for me, like I I love I love the promos. All right, and um, talking about promos, if ever or whenever it's gonna happen, we're gonna see Hannah again. So he's gonna probably drop something soon. Imagine Hannah, like you said, Hannah versus Damon. Who do you think? Yeah. Hannah, but by like the skin of his teeth. I think okay, I want Hannah to win because he's in my uh in my fantasy league. Damon, my surprise. Again, we haven't seen him that much in the downtime, right? Uh I have a feeling he became a beast. Uh he he probably built out a technique to, to study like he he found a way for, for Star Wars, not just general knowledge. He he really worked on it, right? Yeah. So, 
I think you they mean, yep. I was going to say Hannah's hungrier. That's what it comes down to. Hannah is hungrier. I'm not saying Damon isn't hungry, but Hannah has the eye of the tiger, as it were. He's got the chip on his shoulder. He's got to, a lot to prove. Damon doesn't have a lot to prove. And so I think that could be the ultimate well, difference in this match. Damon does have a lot to prove in Star Wars. In IG, I think it's actually the contrary. Damon might have everything to prove because he's a household name in Star Wars and you know doesn't really have his place in IG. His first match was good, but was not spectacular. So people were like, okay, he's human. He might not do that well yeah. next time against a better competitor. This is a chance to prove. They're saying, look, look, I am serious. I can beat hashtag 80% easily, you know? So if he loses that, he might just go back to Star Wars, especially if he loses in a very bad fashion, like a KO or TKO. I, I, you know, I don't think so. I think if Damon were to lose, it wouldn't necessarily hurt his reputation okay. at all. Whereas as, as Hannah, like everyone's kind of always, always is on his on his case. So if he were to lose, that just would be more hounding people, hounding him and stuff like that. So that's why I say he's definitely got more to prove and he's got a bigger chip on his shoulder, which could definitely help. Yeah, I know. Well, we shall see. It's a lot of speculation, but I can't wait to see everything unfold to see what we were completely right and completely off the mark. That being said, Soda, Dave, let's finish it here. Thank you very much for being on the show, as always. always. Uh, so, Soda, where can we find you, sir? Uh, you can find me uh, at Soda, the underscore, the underscore Saxman on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me managing the Media Sweaties Twitter uh, network Twitter account. Um, and there might be actually something come, special coming down the pipe there that I might be helping them with. Um, I've got an upcoming match kind of dropping hopefully soon, which I'll let you all guys know all about uh, for the Jack of All Trivia um, fan league. And immediately after this, you can find me going going back to sleep on my couch. <laughs> all right. And you, Dave? Uh, you can find me. I usually have a bunch of bunch of plugs but today i'm just gonna say uh at schmoes of the north on facebook and and twitter follow us there subscribe to our U youtube cha channel and soda that's that's Lou's line he's the one who's going back to bed come on yeah man. but it's this eight, is, it's 8 a.m where i'm at this is gimmick <laughs> infringement at its worst my man hey man my we changed ours it was bound to happen <laughs> Yeah, but it's, now you know how it feels like for us being like at midnight and doing the show. We're like, yeah. why are we doing this at midnight? Yeah, but, no, uh, I know. That being said, Dave is completely right. If you're not subscribed, what you doing? Subscribe. We're having a special gift for for those when we get at a hundred. Uh, so the quicker, quicker, quicker you subscribe to our uh, channel, the faster we're gonna post it. It's already done. We're just waiting on you, people. One more uh, thing before we cut off. Our engineer Dave to celebrate his 25th birthday this week. So if everyone would want to wish him a happy birthday, yes, or you know, uh, send uh, send uh, gifts of uh, sucker punches, um, yeah. or people squashing berries. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, thank you for watching Schmodown Night in Canada. Um, hope you all have a great uh, week ahead of you, and we will see you next time. All right. Bye. And no, no, before we go, also, <laughs> something I want to talk about, but apparently someone doesn't like me enough. Even I'm not the one who said it. Um, if you haven't seen it, don't miss out. I was a special guest on Hotel Nerds uh, last uh, last show with Alex from uh, Call to Action or Schmobates, uh, more precisely. It was an awesome, very long, but very worth it watch. So please don't miss that out. 100%. All right. Well, in that case... Till next time, bye-bye.